you've got your own former Democratic Party that you need to pull from, and you've got Republicans, obviously. Where people will read your comments about vaccines is, is often less about that aspect of it, the capture and the motives and the incentives, and some of the things you've said about vaccines and its impact and its, you know, on, on, on human beings and the risks associated with that. Um, which I think personally are two very different things. Like, what, how do you square that and do you worry that that message will hinder your ability to reach the Democratic base in particular? Well, my, you know, my, I think um, my position on vaccines have always been that I'm not anti-vaccine. I've said that for 20 years. Uh, the term anti-vax applied to me as a pejorative to discredit me to silence me, to make people not listen because, oh, he's anti-vax and therefore he must be crazy. And, but I've always said for 20 years, I'm not anti-vaccine. I got fully vaccinated. I didn't do the COVID vaccine, but prior to that, I was fully vaccinated. I took the flu vaccine every year. My seven kids are all f fully vaccinated. Um, so I, I'm not, my issue has always been Two things. One is I want good. I want to get the pharmaceutical industry out of the regulatory process, and I want to get have good science, so that we have a very good information, the best information possible on efficacy issues. Does the vaccine actually work to tar on the target disease? And secondly, safety issues. Are you more likely seven years from now, after taking this product, to be alive and healthy? healthier than if you did not. Those questions we have for every medical product, except vaccines. Why is that? Because vaccine is the only medical product or drug or medical device that is exempt <coughs> from pre-licensing safety studies. So I actually litigated on this issue, sued the, sued the um, HHS and said, because for many years I was saying there has never been a safety study on any of the 72 vaccines that are required for our children. When I was a kid, I got three vaccines. I was fully compliant. My kids had to take 72 vaccines, and now today's kids have to take upwards of 80 before they're 18 in order to stay in school in states like California and New York. <clears throat> and my question was, have any of those vaccines ever been subject to pre-licensing placebo-controlled trials. And the, tr the fact is they're all exempt. There is, and not one of them has ever had a pre-licensing safety trial. The, what that means is that nobody knows what the real risk profile is for that product. And I think before we ask Americans, particularly healthy Americans, these are not people who are sick. They're people who are perfectly healthy. Before they take a medical intervention, there should be good safety science on it. Their doctors should know it, they should know it. And, and the other issue is that um, people are, do get injured by these products. In fact, as you probably know, vaccines are exempt from any litigation. So no matter how reckless the company is, no matter how uh, negligent they are in creating that product, no matter how grievous your injury, you cannot sue that company. And, um, and this act was passed in 1986, and at that time, you know, there were only a few vaccines, but it, that was like, a, that caused a gold rush where all these other products were added to the schedule because now you have a product that, um, the, one of the biggest costs for every medical product is downstream liability, and now that was a race. With vaccines, there's also no advertising requirements because the government is ordering 76 million kids to take the product, and there are no safety study requirements, which saves them about a quarter billion dollars. So it's like it's the ideal product, and the government pays for a lot of its development. And, and so, you know, it's a product that we need to really watch carefully because the industry has no incentive to make it safe on its own. And this is an industry, there's four companies that make all of them for our country. And those four companies have paid about $75 billion in criminal penalties for their other products over the past decade and a half. So those are products they can get sued on and they paid 79 billion in criminal penalties. But here's a product 
you can never sue them on. They can never get caught. And so do we have any assurance that they're treating this product any better than they did with Vioxx and all the other drugs? And, you know, there are millions of Americans, they're, 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 the vaccine court has paid out billions of dollars to people who are injured. In the preamble of the Vaccine Act, the Vaccine Act says, vaccines are unavoidably unsafe. Some people are gonna get injured, some are gonna die. And that's why we need to give this immunity from liability. And there's a, it created a vaccine court. Well, that court has paid out billions of dollars to people who are injured. So people do get injured, people do die. And what I wanna do is to make sure that we're studying those people, we're taking care of them, and we're making sure that we make that product as, as safely as possible. I'm not, I've never said I'm gonna take vaccines away from people. I believe in freedom of choice. If you want that product, you ought to be able to get it. I say one other thing. Right now, the CDC has recommended recently the ninth COVID booster. So they're telling, they're telling Americans this is necessary for your health to get nine. Fewer than 10% of Americans are doing that. That means 90% of Americans have lost faith in those recommendations. Do you think it's advisable that the CDC can now order you to not go to your job, to not leave your home, to not get on an airplane, to not go into a public building unless you get that ninth booster? I don't think most Americans don't want that. And I believe we should have freedom of choice in every part of our lives. And if you want to take it, you can.